out of let's be. We're going to spread this encouragement from the church to the street. The Lakeisha, Lakeisha, Lakeisha Mosley Show. The Lakeisha, Lakeisha, Lakeisha Mosley Show. The Lakeisha, Lakeisha, Lakeisha Mosley Show. And they talk about nothing but the unseen and unspoken issues while providing encouragement and love and understanding. She talks about issues that people in high places and influences are afraid to discuss publicly. Stay tuned. It's about to get real live, live, live. And you're tuned in to the Lakeisha Mosley Show. Hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I am Lakeisha Mosley, and this is the Lakeisha Mosley Show. And I'm having a great evening. I'm having a great evening because um, it's a great day to talk about the topics that we talk about. And I have an amazing special guest. Um, he really is an inspiration to the world, and I'm excited for you to get to know him tonight. First, we're going to introduce my amazing intro host. Her name is Letitia Decoe, better known as Eternal. She's the one that does my intro. She's anointed, amazing gospel artist, and I so love her. Sister, thank you so much for doing what you do for me and for the world today in your ministry. I want to introduce my special guest who is, um, he's a minister, he is a author, he is a speaker, he is a husband, he is a motivational speaker as well, too. He does so many things for the kingdom of God as an entrepreneur as well, and I'm so excited to talk to him because we're going to have a little conversation today about seed season evolve, being seed season. When you have a seed that's small and it's blooming and it's prospering really big, People are looking like, wow, how did it get so big? Oh, my goodness. Did you really have any struggles? Well, listen, he is a man of God that's, that's transparent and talking about how his seat was so small and how it bloomed into what it is today. And I'm excited to talk to him. His name is author Joshua Proby. Joshua Proby, are you here with me today? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I'm honored to be here with you, Ms. Leticia. Honored. Thank you. I'm so glad that you're here. You took the time out to come on a Lakeisha Mosley show because you have so many things going on, and I believe our listening audience is really going to be encouraged and blessed tonight with you. Yes, ma'am. I hope so. I pray for me so. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I really believe so. You have... Uh, so many things going on, and within your time, you had time to really just put it all into a published book, and it's called 30 Days Journey from Prison to Spiritual Peace. I'm so grateful for you to um, express this book with us because I believe that it is going to bless everyone in the studio audience today. Yes, 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 yes. It's a blessing to be able to be an author. It wasn't easy, but I'm blessed. I'm blessed to be where I am today. Awesome. So I have a question for you. You know, and I know you get this all the time. Well, what made you, um, I should say, what inspired you to write this book? Um, what inspired me to write this book was absolutely nothing <laughs> what the average person would think that would cause them to write a book. Um, I, for one, I never even thought that I could write a book because I couldn't even sit still five minutes, let alone to read a book, let alone to write one. So the inspiration that came for writing a book was more in the concept of it was therapy for me at the time and therapy ended up turning into a book. So it was more just the fact of me expressing how I felt on the inside on paper and, um, God allowed it to manifest into a book. Wow, that's interesting. I feel like um, it was bubbling out of you, you know, from a place uh, that was needed. I feel like that it was something that came into play um, by everything that you, you experienced in life. So, you know, can you share with us, you know, just a little bit about that, some of the things that you experienced that really, you know, began to um, cause ink to paper for this book? Yes, as a youth, um, I went through a lot of traumatizing situations, a lot of painful situations. Um, I was raised in the church, of course, um, knowing, standing on the foundation of Jesus Christ. 
But at that age, I was kind of like frustrated and I really didn't understand um, what was going on with me because at the age of 10, I was molested. So at that early of an age, I didn't really know how to express this feeling, talk about this feeling, speak about this feeling. So a lot of anger, frustration, rage, fear, so many different types of emotions was bottled up um, because I was robbed of really um, my innocence at a very early age. And because this happened, I, it created a prison mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And um, in this book, From Prison to Spiritual Peace, um, I speak about that. I speak about not just the physical aspect of prison where I end up landing myself and spending 12 years in prison, but I speak more about the mental, emotional, and spiritual prison that I was in far before I ever hit the physical prison itself. So it was definitely um, needed. It was a cry out. It was for help. It just came out in a negative way. And I took from people. I robbed people. I never would justify um, my actions. Never will. But the reason why I did it was because somebody took something from me. There was so much pain, um, mental, emotional, and spiritual abuse growing up in my household. It wasn't safe enough to speak about something so dear to your heart. And it wasn't that my family was just horrible. It was that they were only reciprocating what they knew. They were taught pain, so they taught pain. And it wasn't necessarily consciously, but more unconsciously. So by them inflicting that, that's what I carried from the age of 10 all the way until 31 until I finally told my wife, you know, what had happened to me at such an early age. You know, I feel that um, you really um, began to evolve um, at that time, really at the time that, you know, was so tragic, that was so um, um, horrific, you know. Um, sometimes we think evolving is always in a good place. But it really, it starts from the place that we're at. Sometimes it's from a, a devastating place, you know, and we began to realize, you know, we don't want this. And we began to realize what we do want. And we turn to God and say, God, why, why did this happen? I believe you felt that way. You asked a lot of questions to God, you know? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It was a lot of questions like, why am I here? What, how did I get here? How did I get in this place? And I was in solitary confinement for two years, a room a little bit slightly bigger than your bathroom. And I was coming out of that room only an hour a day. So as you say, in that evolving stage, um, before anybody can go forward to fulfilling their purpose, they have to find out what is stagnating them from fulfilling. And that's the part that a lot of individuals seem to get frustrated at because you get to the point where you've put a wall up, you've built a prison so high that you think that you've shielded yourself from seeing the pain. But the fact that what you've done is you've built a prison that stagnates you from reaching your purpose. So now you have to come back and you have to tear that wall down because the very wall you built is the very direction you have to go to fulfill your purpose, but you first must face the pain that has stagnated you from fulfilling. Wow, this is amazing. Everyone, I have minister and author Joshua Proby with me, and he is talking about his amazing creation, 30 Days Journey from Prison to Spiritual Peace. And he's really just going deep in with us, just really just how we are having um, those unconscious prisons that are within us and um we're, ex we're expressing it in the ways that we know how at that moment, you know, whether it's prison, whether it's, you know, bad relationships, whether it's just not really being stable, you know, in society. I, I just feel like, you know, um, everyone's getting their answers today. We have a great listening audience. I believe we talked about this before, um, Mr. Joshua, just as far as me being a mental illness advocate. So our audience is really ready to hear from you, just hear you know, from a transparent way of how they can re really recover and heal from what, you know, that's been plaguing them for years. We're talking about people of influence, they're ministers, you know, they're um, gospel artists, they're politicians, they're leaders in the world that really can expose vulnerability. And this is, this is really helping people who, you know, feel that way that they can't be human, that they, you know, where there's God is not with them. But, you know, you're telling them that God is with them today, I feel like. Most well, definitely, most well, definitely. Sometimes we can get into a certain position into our lives 
whether we're doctors, we're lawyers, um, as you said, politicians or artists. And we tend to paint a certain picture of how we're seen. And the picture that we're painting is not necessarily in alignment with the truth that we really want to reveal because the platform has become so big that my truth must be drowned in order for you to perceive me based on what you see. And for many years, I did that. I want you to perceive me as this strong, tough, um, wise person. But inside, I was, I, was, I was hurting. I was in pain. I was frustrated. I was angry. But because I had already built a false reality, it was so hard for me to tap into the truth. At least I tear down the reality that I thought was true, but really a lie. So it's not necessarily that the artists or the individuals in everyday life may experience being molested. But the fact is that depending on the platform in which you go to, that can be your prison if you don't take your purpose first. If the platform becomes bigger than the purpose, then now you're beginning to create a prison that doesn't allow you to be truly truthful with you. And then you become alone. And then you become fearful. And then you become more of what people want you to be rather than what God has destined you to be. Wow. I feel like you're telling us right now that if we don't cook up until, you know, our destiny, until, you know, our release state, you know, we remain bound, you know, in a place um, that God didn't intend for us to stay at. You know, we have those insecurities that God didn't intend for us to stay there. I feel like that's what you're telling us there. Yes, yes. It's never meant for you to stay in that wilderness. God wants you to come out, and that's one of the things that I say. It's time that we stop building prisons and start building bridges, bridges to unity, bridges to peace, bridges to love. But at the end of the day, it's not just speaking truth, but it's living it. It's implementing programs. It's implementing things that allow people to see that you're not just here for the platform to speak nice, but your actions are actually showing you in the trenches, actually doing the work of kingdom building work. So of course it's never meant for you to stay in the wilderness. Um, it's never meant for you to stay into darkness, but sometimes our eyes have become so accustomed to darkness that the light hurts. Wow. That is interesting. You just said something that was very profound. Sometimes, you know, our, our, our eyes hurt from the light because we're so used to darkness. Listen, did someone just get, you know, their answer just in that statement right there? Um, just it, it sometimes we are so conditioned, we're so, um, you know, content in our lack, in our, you know, um, inability to see prosperity. And, you know, we get comfortable. I think I talked about that before. I want to know if that was um, last week or maybe a week before that I was talking about just being comfortable in our state um, right now that we don't have any drive or motivation to move forward. You know, you, you, I feel that you're, you're talking that statement right there and, and showing us a place where we can break free in your book. Yes. Yes. In the book you break free because for many years, you know, if you ask the question, you know, we always see somebody homeless, you know, we always see somebody who, who doesn't have a home, a lack of, uh, whether it's um, homelessness doesn't just start with the person who doesn't have something to eat or who doesn't have a place to go. Um, homelessness starts for them feeling like they have nowhere to go mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Um, something has happened that has caused the derailing in their process or in their purpose. And the book pretty allows everybody to know that it's, there's some point in time in our lives that we're homeless. And there's a point in time in our life where we feel like we can't go anywhere um, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Sometimes we become so bound, the prison becomes so big. Um, because prison is not necessarily just a physical point. Prison can be defined as a, as a form of restraint. It restrains you from being who God has destined you to be. So if pain, frustration, anger, doubt, career, um, bottled up in fame, success, um, whatever it may be, you've engulfed yourself in it because you feel like you can't go anywhere. You're homeless to who you truly are. And the only way that you find your home is just like the prodigal son. He went away and he chose to leave and rest in homelessness. Not the fact that he was in the pigsty and didn't have anywhere to go, 
But mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, he was homeless because he left his cover. And there's so many times in our lives when things happen to us and we trust that circumstance over the covering of Christ. And when we trust the circumstance bigger than that, then we become in this world going through the motions, but actually mentally, emotionally, and spiritually homeless. Wow. Everyone, this is really a blessing for us tonight. I have minister and author Joshua Proby here with us, and he is talking about the 30-day journey from prison to spiritual peace. This is this amazing creation um, that he's discussing with us today. The keys to freedom, you know, from being in a mental prison, from being in unconscious prison that um, we are living in sometimes. You know, this is real talk. This is real talk transparent. I'm always transparent on my show and talking about those times where we could be successful in certain areas of our life. You know, we could have the money. We could have you know, the title and those things. But there are some things that, you know, we haven't addressed when we come behind the closed doors of our house and our our, our home, and, you know, the anxiety, you know, the, um, you know, the places where we don't trust people, you know, the, the, the areas where we don't really um, have any um, flowing um, prosperity in, you know, whether it's relationships, whether it is money, whatever it is, there's areas in our life that we're not given to God for him to really heal in us. And I believe that minister and author Joshua Covey is really showing us how we can re- be, you know, be free and we can, you know, flow in the prosperity that God has for us um, each and every day by, by acknowledging there there's brokenness there. Sometimes we have to acknowledge it, right? Don't you feel that? <laughs> yes, you definitely have to acknowledge that you're broke and you definitely have to. You definitely have to. Absolutely. Sometimes um, you know, you know, you said, you know, in so many words, you know, how you can have um poverty mindset. And some people may say, What do you mean poverty mindset? I'm not broke. I have money in the bank. I, you know, have cars, I have houses and those things, but poverty mindset is it flows in so many different realms, you know. You know, where we're not even touching it because we, we're so used to it. You know, it's like, wow, we're used to the stench, to the stink, you know. But, you know, somebody else looks and says, do you notice that this is here in your space? And you're like, what are you talking about? And they're like, do you notice that this problem is going on? And it's like, what problem? I don't have any problems. <laughs> right. <laughs> <You know that? laughs> right. Right. It's, it's, it's like it's a, it's, they're oblivious to it because, They've tried to substitute something that fulfills the flesh, but actually is starving the internal peace. So it's like, I right, don't get um, so in depth with me, speak to me, don't speak around me. The fact of the matter is that internally, you starving yourself. You starving yourself of peace, you're starving yourself of understanding. And when you starve yourself, you find outside sources to supplement. For what's being starved. I mean, poverty is just a lack of. In simple terms, it's a lack of. Sometimes we have a lack of understanding of how to truly be humble. Um, We base humility because we got it. And then when that's stripped away, your humility is gone. You, you, You base peace just because you're always in a peaceful situation. But then when you're challenged with something that isn't peaceful, then we see exactly what's been lacking, what there's a lack of. So you constantly have to do inventory on what you're lacking, you know, regardless of the out, the, 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 the external aspect, the aspect of life. You got to you gotta ask yourself, what are you lacking? And that's the self-examination each and every day. And if we don't do that self-examination each and every day, then we keep pushing through life thinking we're not lacking anything and supplementing it for the natural. And then when the natural is gone, we realize, hey, man, I'm empty. Wow. You know, th- this is really serving um, so much, um, you know, that we need right now. It's really giving us the peace and really giving us healing. I, I'm, you know, I'm just honest, you know. Um, sometimes we have to watch what we say. We have to watch what we say, Minister Joshua. I really feel that way. Sometimes we say things that are so subconscious, like you said, that are unconscious, negative words. You know, I know I would used to say I would say something, and this is this may not sound big for anybody else, but, you know, I grew up, you know, in the household, you know, my family, you know, they did like plants and things like that, um, but they 
didn't have much of a green thumb. So they would buy plants, right? And they would last for about a week or so, and they all died because we didn't know really how to keep it living, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. But I grew up like that. I grew up um, saying, well, I don't have a green thumb. I don't have a green thumb. And truth be told, it, I didn't really have the, the training to keep a plant alive. But I, would, I kept saying, I don't have a green thumb. I, and I said this like a couple of weeks ago. You know, I don't have a green thumb. You don't want to give me a plant, you know, because of um, someone that I know is had, you know, a huge green thumb and they were, you know, dividing this one plant, you know, apart. And they were like, well, you know, I can give you a piece and it would grow if you could just put it in this soil and just uh, put water. And I'm like, no, no, I don't have a green thumb. I don't have a green thumb. And it wasn't until I took this plant, they gave it to me and I put it in my um, windowsill and God told me, you know, I can't grow this plant for you if you keep saying you don't have the supplies that you need because I'm telling you that you have a green thumb, but you're going by your history. How can I bring life into you if you keep saying the negative? Yes, so powerful. <laughs> so powerful. Yes, so powerful. So powerful. Oh, God. It is it, isn't that amazing? Isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. it's, it's crazy mm -hmm. when you think about sometimes you're saying things like that. Like, and it wasn't until I said I do have a green thumb, even though I didn't have the track record of having it, even though I didn't have the history and the training to have a green thumb, I said I had a green thumb. Do you know that plant's growing? <laughs> that plant is growing <laughs> now. Right, right. <laughs> because life, life does not, um, life doesn't grow based on what you add to it. Life grows based on what you believe it can grow to. Um, and sometimes I think we, we try to add to life more than just being able to be available for what life offers. And when you're available for it, then you seize those opportunities for growth to happen. And it begins to grow, like you said, you know, it's just like, wow, this is growing because it's not your experience level. It's your willingness to accept life to flow through you so that it can flow to somebody else. And and when we realize that it's not your experience that people see, it's your ability, like you said, to be transparent. It's your ability to be understanding. It's your ability to talk to people and not at people. Um, one of the biggest things that I love about the Word of God is that Jesus met everybody where they were at. I don't care where you look at in the Bible. He met everybody where they were at. And we can only become keys to free other people when we start meeting people where they're at. And if they're on the corner, if they're in the streets, if they're doing this, people might, well, I ain't going over there. I ain't got, tell me when Jesus said, I ain't going nowhere. Because the word of God tells me that greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. So if greater is in you, then regardless of where you go, Christ goes before you, which means that you have the ability to free people just as long as you're willing to meet people where they're at. And when you meet them where they're at, just like the plant, things begin to grow simply because you allow life to flow through you. My Lord, everyone, family, I have minister and author Joshua Proby who is the amazing creation of the 30-day journey from prison to spiritual peace. Listen, you have to go and purchase this amazing book because it's going to change your life and it's going to give you the keys to success and now to break from the mental prisons that are within, not on the outside, that are within. You know, Minister Joshua, um, it's amazing that you talk about um, certain ways of, uh, of how to break free from some of our stigmas that we plant on the inside of us and that we, um, a lot of our um, own shortcomings that we put on ourselves. Sometimes we don't realize we put it on ourselves, our limitations. Right. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, we tell, our, we tell ourselves that we're defeated and we don't even realize it because we're so used to doing it, you know, and it, and, and, and the true, true, it may be from some of our past, experience. You know, you may have grew up and our family said, you know, something that wasn't positive or friends at school or people that we grew up with, you know, may not have been as 
strong encouragers, but at the same time, you know, God is always with us in our place, wherever we are, he's with us, right? Like you said, and, and, you know, he's always pushing us. He's always pulling us and guiding us into freedom one step at a time, just where we are, right? Just where we are, wherever we are currently, if you're coming from the prison, if you're coming from the church, if you're coming, you know, from school, wherever you are, he's meeting us where we're at. Most definitely, he definitely is. We, that's exactly where we're at, and that's what we have to learn to reciprocate with others. Sometimes we see things that don't match our ideology or don't match our tradition or don't match our upbringing, but Christ broke through the barriers of tradition, of of religion, of, of all of those things that people said, and he, he met people where they were at. And I think one of the biggest illustrations that people know and he said, well, he who was without first sin cast the first stone. And that is the biggest example of meeting somebody where they're at. So if Christ could do it, then why do we tend to get so caught up in the prisons that we've built? And we begin to look from the, from the windows of our own prisons, and then we begin to judge or, or dictate or begin to cast judgment, and we're looking out of the window of our own prison and throwing the brick for somebody else to build the same prison that we're looking out the window of. So it's time that we begin to start taking those bri- those prisons down and start building bridges. And you do that by first self-examining yourself and also by facing the pain. A lot of people say, yeah, you know, that's easy to face. It's easier said than done. But who cares if you got to cry? Who cares if you have to be alone? Who cares if you feel down? But the moment that you face the pain, the pain can no longer rule you but rather you have dominion over it. So the question you then have to ask yourself, which is simple, you look in the mirror and you ask yourself, do I want this pain to continue to keep ruining or am I prepared to face it? And the hardship that comes through facing, but that's most of all, am I ready to experience the peace that comes after? Wow. That's amazing that you said that, you know, it feels like that comes when humility comes. (laughs) Most definitely, yes, but a lot of it. Yeah, I I really feel that because a lot of times humility brings us to a state where, you know, um, we're able to hear. But a lot of times humility comes after the storm. It doesn't come before the storm a lot of times. Sometimes we're cocky. Sometimes we're, you know, know know-it-all before the storm. But I feel like after we've been through some trials and tribulation. You know, wisdom really comes in that state of humility, and um, I believe that um, there's always a a word I'm looking for. There's always a value in that, you know, in the storms that we've been through. Do you feel that there's value in the storms that we've been through? Yes, there is so much value because the storms, they're actually things that, that show you what you've overcome. You know, the storms are, are are so unbearing at times. You know, don't think, don't get it twisted for one second and act like just because I'm where I'm at right now that I don't go through storms. I go through storms right now. <laughs> it's, it's the fact that the previous storms, which were a lot more rocky than the ones that happen now, prepared me to know how to stay safe in the midst of the storm. Sometimes storms are going to come and, and, and you got to get through the storm. It don't mean that you got to, you, the, the word of God says that I am a strong tower in the time of need. And I know those who trust in me. So when we're going through storms, we got to know that, <laughs> that Christ is the strong tower and he's that shelter. It don't mean that you got to fight the storm by yourself because you can't. You'll drown. You'll lose. So you just have to find safety. And when you find safety, you know that it was your ability to reach and call out for help that allowed you to sustain it. So as you continue to go through your next storm and your next storm and your next storm, you continue to cry out. And then you see the power of Christ, but most importantly, you see the power in you. And when you see the power in you, you're able to give that to others because people can sense it in your spirit. Um, Your words can be elegant. Your words can be nice and all of that. But if the spirit...
spirit doesn't line up with what you're saying, then it, it, it's not beneficial for somebody else. So storms always add power to your testimony that eventually unlocks the prison for other people. Wow. I feel like there is no excuses anymore. I feel like that, you know, no matter where we came from, no matter what we're going through currently, you know, that, you know, we can move forward and we can reach, you know, our destiny, what God has for us. And I feel like they are, they're going to experience that in your book. This is amazing. Everyone, please understand this man of God is speaking truth right now. This is a minister and author, Joshua Proby, and he is the author of The 30-Day Journey from Prison to Spiritual Peace. Listen, it's, this is really um, blessing me right now, and I believe it's blessing all of us on the show right now. Joshua, I have a question for you. So you uh, do so many things, you know, within the community. Uh, and you're here in Baltimore, which I totally love that because Baltimore is growing and it's evolving and it's changing. Um, and it needs leaders like you in order to, uh, for them to reach, you know, the goals that they um, have um, within the inner city. You have um, programs out here. You know, what do you have? You have a lot of projects going on. You have um, programs for youth, um, you know, within the church, but you have um, a couple of things going on. You're also, you know, a life coach as well. I mean, you know, what is your drive? What is your motivation right now in this season um, to um, embark um, in, within the community and abroad? Um. I'm, I'm, I'm in North Carolina. I was in Baltimore. I was in Baltimore. I have family there, um, newfound family, and Baltimore is a beautiful, beautiful city, beautiful city. Some of the things that I have going on right now, there's a curriculum with the book um, that will be going into the prisons. There is also uh, starting a business. I have a business getting ready to launch a transportation business. And the reason for it all, my purpose, is, it, my, my, my reason for it all is, is simple. It's just purpose. That's my reason. It's purpose. Um, everything that I've done, I've seen people struggle. Um, I was molested when I was 10. I watched my mother deal with addiction, who is in the ministry now, the strongest woman that I know. Um, I watched my grandmother um, go through hardship, never knew my father um, in the streets, best friend dying. I, I've seen it all, but it's not about the war stories. It's simply about what are you doing now that implements and adds value to somebody else. And the reason why I do everything that I do is because I want to add value to somebody else. I want to be able to have that person who comes from prison, who comes from hardship, who comes from feeling like they can never do nothing, and put them inside of a truck and, and, and give them a job that makes them feel like they're worthy. I want to go back into the jails and not just have a book that has shelf life, but that continues to evolve, that continues to allow people to see themselves through the story, not just me, so that it can begin to transform people's lives. I want to go into schools, which is why I created the curriculum with the book, to be able to go back in there and allow people to learn from it, not just at-risk kids, but those who are in college battling the prison of acceptance, battling the prison of just trying to please their mothers or their fathers being forced into a field that really doesn't make them happy. So it's not just um, a stationary for those who are struggling. It goes from the top all the way down. And my fuel is to allow everybody to understand what Christ looks like. And sometimes, as you already know, the only time people are going to see Christ is through you. Wow, that is amazing. Everyone, this is minister and author Joshua Crowby, and he is blessing everyone on the show today. And, and everyone, I believe you're receiving some healing um, right now. Because healing in answers, healing in um, understanding who you are, and whose you are. And remember, God is always uh, inspiring you to succeed. And he uses um, willing vessels in order to um, get his message out to the masses. And I believe um, Minister Joshua Proby is that vessel that is uh, gifted to us tonight on the Lakeisha Mosley Show. I'm definitely grateful for you 
in everything that you have um, moving forward and what you're doing um, in the inner city um, of where you're at and in your hometown here. And um, I'm just, we're just grateful for you. We're thankful because you're not alone. You're not alone. Um, I believe we talked about this before just on this mission of exposing a mental illness for what it is because a lot of times people think um, mental illness is some uh, plague and it's like, ooh, I don't want that. You know, this is, what is it? It's like some, you know, crazy thing and it's like, no, mental illness can be anxiety. (laughs) Mental illness can be uh, you know, just the the smallest things, you know, that, you know, most people don't even realize depression, you know, <laughs> people yeah, don't understand yeah. that all of those things <laughs> are, are effects yeah. of mental illness, right? You know, it's, so it's true, amazing. So true. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. I really feel that you're exposing that a lot of times. Most people don't feel that they're, um, uh, that they're not having that within, and, you know, I believe you're showing them this, you know, just look over your life, look over, you know, do a, do a heart check, do an inner check within, you know, um, in your circle. Is there something that you really want to take to the altar, take to God? And, you know, you don't have to tell everybody, you know, it's just the inner peace within you and God. And I believe that you can get, you know, those keys within this book right now. This um, 30-day journey from prison to spiritual peace. I believe that when you receive this copy of this book, you're going to get some answers that you've been looking for that you didn't realize was a big issue. And a minister and author, Joshua Proby, is really showing you just how um, free you can be and you can succeed and be a blessing unto others. Because when we're free, we're not supposed to just be free by ourselves. We're supposed to share the wealth. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> so when we share the wealth, we're blessed and even more in abundance. Because you receive uh, inner peace and a satisfaction that you didn't even realize that you had. When you see someone else smile because something that you did, I mean, that just that makes you feel so good. You know, you only get that contentment and that um, that peace and that prosperity when that happens. When you give, you will receive. I really believe that. Joshua Proby, please let everyone know. Minister Joshua, um, Arthur Joshua Proby, please let everyone know how they can stay connected with you and um, what they need to look forward to because you have a lot going on. Please let them know what they can look forward to within your space today. Yes, um, you can get the book at www.joshuaproby. Proby is spelled P-R-O-B-Y. And that website is www.joshuaproby.org. Or you can follow me on Facebook at simply Josh Proby. Instagram, Josh Proby as well. And um, there's so much coming up, but every... I necessarily don't like to speak too much about the platform. These people are gravitated to the platform rather than the purpose. Um, So I go, there's so much coming up. Um, I have a business conference coming up in um, next month. I'll be in Chicago. um, Most recent, I'll be in the Baltimore DC area, June 1st on the Armstrong Williams show, which is on the ABC platform. But most importantly, the purpose is coming to the platform. So it's just a blessing. God has opened up so many doors, and May 27th will be one year after being released from prison. So it's a lot coming up this month. I'm excited. I'm blessed for how God has fast-tracked my life, and shows such as yours is a blessing to my life. I'm so humble. I remember when I was talking to people, there was only one person in the room. So I'm so grateful just to be where I'm at. And um, I will never despise humble beginnings and never despise anything as long as I bring the platform. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you to Dr. Eric Holmes out of Baltimore, who if it was not for him inviting me, I would have never met you. So I'm so grateful. Praise God. Well, I'm definitely um, blessed and grateful had I met you, uh, Minister Joshua. 
and definitely everything that you're doing. I mean, we're so excited about, I tell you, you're, you're, you're just a blessing and you're evolving before our eyes. And definitely, please, please, anything else that you have, any other projects that you have moving forward, I would love to have you back on the show so we can tell the world about it. For sure, I definitely would, definitely would, and look forward to it. Amen. I'm so grateful for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. And right now, we're going to go into the last segment of our show, and it is called Lakeisha's Love Letter of Healing, Encouragement, and Empowerment. And we're going to um, talk about Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 through 7, and it's called, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplications with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and to the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. You know, it's so amazing what this scripture is saying to us right now. He is Pretty much God just telling, let us know right now that in anything that we're going through, in anything that we're, you know, um, being uh, exposed to, to not be anxious about it. Don't, you know, go off and try to fix it. Don't go off and do anything drastic. But let that fear go and give it to God and give him anything that is overbearing within your space. If it's overbearing, you're not supposed to fix it. A lot of times we forget that God is here with us and he is our fixer. He is our corrector and our healer. And a lot of times we try to fix it on our own. Listen, I'm honest. I'm transparent. I I was always trying to do that by myself. I said, I'm helping God out. I have my toolkit. God, like, look at it. I got this toolkit. God's like, well, you know what? When you're ready to sit down, then I'll get up. And when I realized that, when I realized that it's it's so important for me to let God take control because he know all and he knows how to move me forward. I don't have to know everything because God does. And I want to encourage you to understand that God knows everything that you're going through. He knows everything that you need. He knows everything that you desire. And he already has a plan for you to get it. So all you got to do is relax. All you got to do is chill out and let him be God in your life. I love you so much. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Lakeisha Mosley Show. Make sure you tune in next next week at 9 p.m. on Mondays and definitely be encouraged to listen to the replay again because this, this show is really blessing. This is a blessing um, for us to be able to get those keys that God really wanted us to hear tonight. And I really appreciate you all. Thank you so much for coming in. And now we're going to end. And the last segment of the show is going to end with Jerry Royce Live. And it's going to be with Shay Sams. And they're going to talk about an amazing topic with an amazing guest. So I love you guys. Have a blessed evening. And be encouraged and understand. And all you do, lead with confidence, understanding, and love always. Have a good night. Worldwide podcast. All right, family, family, thank you so much for tuning in to share this file. It was an awesome show. We want to thank Mr. Josh Proby for joining us on the Lakeisha Mosley Show for Lakeisha Mosley. Don't forget, y'all, Paula G. That's right, my journey with Paula G is coming back to Owings Mills, Maryland for a television taping. You know, Paula G Show is now international. Is running on the Janico TV Faith Network, which is woo, huge. Got to check it out. The app is out there. Check out our page. So if you want to be a guest on that show, just go to PaulaGVoice.com. PaulaGVoice.com. And uh, we'll put you on a, on a list to be contacted. It should be taping July 26th and 27th in, outside of Baltimore. You come in through BWI or you could drive. And also, we'll be back in Atlanta, October 11th at the Black Box. That's right, at the Good Acting Studio, live studio audience. That'll be exciting for you guys. So come on out, check that out. That'll be happening again October 11th in Atlanta. Well, actually, I believe that is Marietta, Georgia. 
outside of Atlanta. But anyway, I'm coming in through Atlanta. So look out for the Batman. All right, everybody. Stay tuned for Late Night with Jervis Live Worldwide and Shay Samuels. That's right. Our special guest, Daya Loren. She got brand new music. It's going to be an exciting interview. That's one of Shay's favorite independent gospel arts. All right, y'all. Let's take a quick break. Let's listen to this one called All My Praise by Sean Scales. Lift up your name I've got to give You all my praise I've got to bless Your holy name You're worthy of Of all my praise I've got to lift up yeah. Lift up your I've name gotta give I've got all. to give You all my praise I've got to bless mm-hmm. Your holy name yeah. You're worthy of <laughs> Listen. Of my I've praise. got so Sing this song. I've got to lift, yes, sir. Lift up my hands. I've got to do my holy dance. I've got to lift, yeah. Lift up my hands. Church, y'all. Hallelujah. 